Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make awesome black and white conversions in Photoshop. In this video I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can convert to black and white in Photoshop and I'm going to show you why you might choose some in preference to others. Now one of the ways to convert an image to black and white is just simply to choose image adjustments and then desaturate and that desaturates the image converting it to black and white. There are a couple of reasons why I wouldn't recommend this as an adjustment. One of them is that we've applied it to the background layer and we can't tweak this adjustment. Once it's on the image, it's on the image. The only choice we have is to undo it. It doesn't give us any ability to tweak the black and white. And also, you'll notice here that if I just press Control alt z or Command option z on the Mac, we have a green background and a pink shirt on this girl. Let's go and reapply that adjustment and see that the background and the shirt are converted to pretty much the same shade of grey. Now if we were to apply a black and white adjustment where we had a little bit more control over it, we may be able to take the background and the shirt in different directions and perhaps make one lighter or one darker than the other. Let's go back to this image and let's apply what I consider to be a better choice of black and white adjustment and that is choosing image adjustments and then black and white. Now this is going to again be applied to the image itself so if you would prefer to apply it as an adjustment layer you can do so. Let's do that. We're going to choose layer, new adjustment layer, black and white but these are exactly the same adjustment. It's just that one is applied as an adjustment layer and the other is applied direct to the image. And I think that you'll find that adjustment layers just give you a whole lot more flexibility when you're working with your images. So what adjustments you can make using adjustment layers, I usually recommend that you do. So let's just click that and let's click OK. And we get this properties dialog here and you can see that there are a set of sliders and they go from minus 100 to plus 100 and these are the colours that we can adjust. So we can adjust reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues and magentas. And what we do is we can drag this slider in either direction and dragging to the left is going to take the reds in this image and make them darker and to the right will make them lighter. Now the skin tones are in this area so we want to watch and make sure that we don't totally wreck our skin tones by dragging on this slider. But other sliders would be appropriate here. You know that we had a green background. Well, if we wanted to darken up that background, we could do so by just dragging the green slider to the left. Now, some of these colors may not be in the image, so you may not get any alteration of the image by dragging a particular slider. And in this image, we have very little cyan. So we're not seeing any real effect by dragging the cyan slider, but other sliders we may have an effect with. When you're dragging these sliders out, it's a really good idea not to do this, where you're taking the reds in one direction and the very next slider in the other direction. The reason for this is that it's very likely in your images that you will have reds and yellows fairly close together. And if you take one towards the darks and one towards the lights, you're going to build up a lot of black and white contrast in that area. And so it's going to look like you have noise and you're actually fracturing the image. You can see that we're actually destroying the image in the process. So typically you want to adjust adjacent sliders so that they're fairly close to each other and not a long way away. You want to create a sort of gentle curve through this adjustment so that you're not fracturing colors that way. Now in addition to being able to adjust the image using these sliders, you can also use the targeted adjustment tool. We'll click on it and now I can click on an area of the image to pick up that color and you can see that the little girl's shirt here is in the magenta area because that's the slider that's being highlighted when I click on her shirt. And now we can lighten it by dragging it to the right or darken it by dragging to the left. 
Now this will affect not only her shirt but any other magenta color that we have in the image. So just be aware that because we're dragging on her shirt doesn't mean that there are not other magenta colorings in the image and they will be being affected by our adjustment here. We can also apply a tint to the image. So I'm going to click here on tint and you can see that a sort of sepia tint has been added. I can click on this dialog and then I can go and choose different colors. If I choose a very light color, you can see that we're getting a very light result on the image. If I choose a very dark color, the effect is almost going to be negated. We're just going to get the very slightest amount of a tint. So you'll probably get better results in this dialogue around this area in the sort of gray and darker color areas. In addition to tints, there are also some presets. So you can click on any of these and see if these give you a good result. Some of them may give you a really good final result. Some of them might give you a really nice starting point. So you may want to experiment with these. Now this adjustment has been applied using an adjustment layer. So that means that we can edit it. We can turn it off if we want to return the image to full color. We can also reduce its opacity, which will give us a sort of very pale coloring effect, almost reminiscent in this particular image of a hand tinted photo. We've got a little bit of color, but not the full color. And I've set the opacity here to 74%. And that's where I'm getting that result with this particular image. You can also, as you're going to see with the next image, you could be painting on this mask to remove or add the effect. We're going to do that with a different image. So let's switch to the image we're going to be working with now. In this image, you can see that we have a blue background that is pretty consistently blue throughout the image. And what we're going to do with this image is we're going to use two black and white adjustment layers. We're going to adjust the bottom part of the image and the top separately. Now to start off with, I'm going to add my black and white adjustment layer and I can do that using this button here and just click black and white. Now I'm going to focus on the top portion of this image. And in this case, I want to get this really dark. So I'm going to drag on the blue slider and probably the cyan slider to darken up this area of the image. And I'm going to ignore what's happening to the bottom part of the image because that's not going to ultimately be affected by this adjustment. So I'm just going to work out what I need to do here to get the result that I want. So I'm thinking that's a pretty good result for the top portion of the image. So I'll just close down this dialogue. Now I want to add a second black and white adjustment layer to affect the bottom portion of the image. So again, I'll add a black and white adjustment. Now if you look at this, you'll see that as I drag any of these sliders, none of them are having any effect whatsoever on this image. The problem is that this black and white adjustment layer is trying to apply itself to the image. And the layer below is a black and white layer. So effectively, this black and white adjustment that I've just added can do absolutely nothing. What I need to do is to tell it to not look at this layer immediately below, but go all the way through it and look at this layer instead. And we do that by clicking here on the Add a Layer Style icon and we're going to choose blending options. You can also get to that by choosing layer and then layer style blending options. When we select this, we're making sure that we have targeted this top layer, the one that's ineffective right now. And to make it effective, what we're looking at in this blending options dialog is the word knockout. And there are three options here and we want to knock it out deep. The default is none. We're going to choose deep and click OK. And immediately you can see that this black and white adjustment layer is now affecting the entire image. So we've lost the power of the middle one effectively right now. And all we've got is this top one. Well, that's OK because for this one, I'm going to concentrate on the bottom part of the image and I'm going to give it an adjustment that is appropriate to it. And in this case, I want the bottom part of the image to be quite light. 
because I'm going to put these two adjustment layers together in a minute. Now there may be other areas of this image that I want to affect. I might darken up the reds and perhaps adjust some of the yellows as well while I'm here. But again, just focusing on what's happening on the bottom portion of the image because we're not going to see the top portion in a minute. When I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click to close that dialog. Now what I need to do is to blend these two layers together. So this layer here is affecting the top of the image. I want it to affect the top of the image only. And this layer here, I want to affect the bottom of the image only. So what I need to do is to use this mask and use this mask to block out this layer so far as it's affecting the top of the image. And I can do that with a gradient fill. So I'm going to click on my gradient tool here and I'm going to make sure that I have a black to white gradient. This one here is a black to white gradient and it will always be the third one in there. So I'm going to target it and I want it to be a linear gradient and I'm not sure right now whether I want to reverse it or not, but let's just see. I've got my mask selected over here and I know that I need to transition across this line here. So I'm going to need to drag at an angle. So I'm just going to click and drag down at an angle and let's just see how that looks. Well, it's the wrong way round, but it's easy to reverse it by just clicking reverse. And because we're filling this layer with a black and white gradient, we can just go and click and drag over the top. We don't have to undo it. We can just dump this second gradient right on top of the first. And you can see here that I've nearly got it right, but probably I need to make the transition a bit shorter. So I'm going to drag a shorter line, but again, making sure that I'm dragging on this angle. Let's try again. Well, that's a pretty good effect. I'm really quite liking that. So I think I'm just going to undo that last gradient and go back and use this one. So what I've got here is that this adjustment layer, this black and white adjustment layer is affecting the top of the image here. And this adjustment layer is affecting the bottom of the image. Now either of these can be readjusted. So I can come in here and I can perhaps crisp up the red areas, but I can drag out any of these sliders and readjust the image as desired. But right now, only the top portion of the image is being adjusted by this adjustment layer because the mask here is controlling that. This adjustment layer here is controlling the bottom part of the image. So if I want to adjust the bottom part of the image, I need to come to this second adjustment layer. This is a handy technique to be aware of because sometimes you might have an image, for example, that has some blue in the sky as well as blue in the foreground of the image. And you may want those two blue areas to be dealt with differently. Well, in a black and white adjustment, just a single black and white adjustment, you can't do that because all the blues in the image are going to be dealt with the same way. Using two adjustment layers, making sure that the top one has its knockout set to deep, you can independently adjust two different areas of the image with the same color in them and then just mask out the area that you don't want to have affected by a particular adjustment. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials like this on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.